Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another session of uh, Nature Writing for Children webinar series brought to you by Azim Premier University. Oh, my name is Shashwat DC, and I welcome you all again, yet again, to another uh, one of our month monthly webinar series where we talk about you know interesting books on nature, and we host these conversations with the uh, writers and illustrators and everyone. For you know, so we have been doing this for the past very many months, and we had the good occasion to talk to a whole range of writers from across India and you know even abroad at times, talking about. Uh, what their books were, what their process were, what, how did they get into this whole thing. And every time we do this, uh, our, our approach has been we'll pick one book on which will be the primary book of that, uh, you know, that uh, talk, uh, the webinar or the, uh, you know, that episode per se, and then build our conversation around it. So for today, we have with us, uh, you know, uh, in all these series of over 20, 25 that we have done in the past, uh, you know, uh, two, three years now, uh, there have been only very few instances where we have spoken to artists and illustrators. So today is our very lucky day, I should say, where we have an illustrator with us who, you know, Raji Vaip, who has been working very, uh, he has been sketching a lot of Im interesting books over the past uh, couple of years and he has, you know, kind of created his own space. So we'll be talking about how he ingrains his art into the books that he does, his work, and what is his process again? As I said, each of these conversations are built on the, you know, the, the primary idea is to share knowledge and also to inspire people to, you know, get into this domain. So without much ado, let me, you know, first welcome you on board, Rajiv, uh, for the talk today. And thank you so much for sparing your time. Thank you, Shashwat. Thanks for having me. And uh, let's uh, hold on the lucky day uh, yeah, we'll leave that judgment to later. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I know that, Rajiv. Uh, the, 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 I should say this, the way, first time we spoke and you were like, what, what will we discuss and uh, what is there to, but I'm sure there's, there's plenty of uh, things that we'll go through. Hello, Sun is one of them. Uh, I would also invite all our uh, viewers right now, if they, you have any questions or queries, you can, uh, you know, type it into the chat box and possibly we'll take them at uh, some time in the during our conversation so without much ado let me start uh, rajiv your own uh, what has been your journey like so we we know that you know you have you had a multi city experience you were born in one city you studied in one you're working out of one and another so if you were to just kind of take us through this whole you know journey of life how you know, please do that yes Yes, very quickly because it's quite boring. Uh, I, I grew up for a little while in Madras till I was around 10. Then we moved to Bombay and then I finished schooling there. And then um, uh, I, I used to draw a lot when I was small and um, my parents were quite supportive. And then uh, I learned about this amazing um, course called uh, Bachelor of Fine Art. And I, uh, I was fortunate enough to um, go to Sir JJ School of Art to study uh, fine art there uh, with a specialization in painting. And um, after that, um, uh, I learned about this course in uh, NID Ahmedabad, uh, the design college, uh, the National Institute of Design had a course uh, in animation film design, and that was extremely fascinating. Um, and again, I was lucky enough to have an opportunity to go and study animation design there. And then I worked in Bombay for a little while in an animation studio. And then I freelanced for a while. I worked on various projects. And then I, around 2008 or 2009, I had the uh, chance to illustrate a book uh, for, for Katha Books, uh, a book written by Geeta Dharmarajan. And um, and uh, after that, I was bitten by the by the illustration bug, and um, yeah, I've been uh, illustrating books since since around then. Yeah. So if you were to ask uh, Rajiv, so you have been doing a lot of illustration, designing work, and you know, a variety of work. When did you know? And the best part is when we do do a bit of you know, be off late. You have been doing a lot of books on the theme of nature, environment. Mm. Is it a conscious choice or is it you know serendipity as they call it? Hmm. Um. So, uh, I think it's a little bit of both. Um. Um. 
I, I around two years back, I took a slight break from uh, commercial animation work, which has always been my main um, sort of uh, occupation, uh, profession, so to speak. Um, and I had been this this uh, this intention to work on conservation and nature related stuff had been brewing in my head for a long time and um and i i took a break from animation with the in, that intention of of doing more books that were um uh, environment themed and um, it just happened you know i i don't know now that you say it and and when someone points it out it, it is true that a lot of the books that i've worked on in the last couple of years have been have uh, had that theme in common um so it it is that uh, i'm looking out for those and also i think it's uh, publishers knowing that um i'm interested in this and and uh, approaching me for stuff like that and also once you build a portfolio of work you you do get uh, um contacted for that kind of work um, so for yeah. example kalpavriksh uh, had a book uh had a manuscript uh, that later became the book chitti a dog and her forest farm and and when they wrote to me about that book the the background was that i had illustrated another book that was uh, that was about dogs for tulika a few years ago and um the 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 editor the commissioning editor had heard that um heard a story about how my partner archana and i had rescued a a, a dog a, a paraplegic dog and uh, sort of taken care of him and and so yeah so so a little bit of uh, intent and um, the universe being kind i think <laughs> yeah interesting so yeah so one of the other interesting aspect is yes i was just you know uh, this when we talk about nature men so often we think about when we talk about nature we think about tigers lions forests and anything mm. but the nature in your books is very close at hand it's 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 like the dog in uh, you know mm. dugga or chitti yeah. or, you know right. all these creatures that that so how what do you what is your you know essence of uh, you know conservation when you when you look at it from that perspective when you look at you know including all these subjects that are are you actively hunting for these small small tidbits which you can include them in your book or you know in your works that you do yeah that that's a nice point um and i think um, there is um th this uh, um, this has been a theme of late i think in in publishing and in conservation in general to talk about you know backyard um like the 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 nature that you see around you and that is accessible to everyone for me personally i i have always been uh, sort of interested in in insects and not always that's an overstatement that uh, again that bug uh, i got bitten by after i moved to bangalore in fact my partner uh, archana who's also an illustrator was was a uh, was a big time bird birder and when we were uh, when we first met we we used to go on a lot of birding trips together and that 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 was sort of my entry into into the world of uh, you know nature and things like that um yeah and and uh, when you yeah when you do when you go birding you observe all kinds of things uh, small beetles that are on the ground and snails and things like that and yeah that, those things have always well again not always but since since around 2016 or so they've always they they've been fascinating to me and um and um yeah it's it's interesting to to put things that you know from your own world into into books you know that that gives books uh, your images a, a kind of authenticity um that 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 sort of uh, travels through the the images into the reader i feel and um 
yeah so so, so like for instance I, I would ask you you tra- do you travel to all these you know the pristine forests and nature <laughs> safaris and uh, as well uh, you know when, when to de-stress or get ideas or it's is it just the uh, walk around the you know some park around your actually uh, i i went for my first safari uh, last month uh, to <laughs> nagarhole uh, <laughs> with my family who's visiting from uh, from abroad um yeah i have i had actually never been uh, for a safari as such um but um again when when you go birding and all you go into places that are not exactly forest but they're on the borders of of cities or there'll be a park slash reserve forest in the middle of town yeah so so it's not it's not like tiger sanctuaries and all but um yeah but whatever is available and and it's surprising how much is available to city folk you know um so i had one question here um, yeah. sorry to so were you observant before you you started working on you know these nature books or while working on this has made you more observant of things around you yeah that's a great question uh, i think again boring answer is a little bit of both like since um i visited trivandrum recently uh, which is where we used to take uh, summer holidays um, when we were small and i remember while walking the streets recently i remember the things we used to do as children you know my co- my brother and my cousins and i we would there, there's a small weed that grows on the side of the road which uh, in summer puts out a a small a uh, black seed pod and when you pluck that seed pod and insert it in water it explodes um so so we were uh, um we we would go and collect these things and and that that was sort of our first um interaction with nature as such but but to answer your question i think um um i i have been observant but but uh, interestingly it was after i illustrated a book for pratham books called pishi and me written by timira gupta uh, the premise of which is is uh, a young boy and his aunt take a walk through the streets of their neighborhood and you know they collect these interesting small things that they found, find uh, along along the way like on the ground or uh, small uh, things that people give them like button hack uh, pins and things like that stickers and things like that so in the course of illustrating that book again to uh, to make the images sort of authentic i had gone around you know my own neighborhood in bangalore um, looking for like what could this boy possibly collect you know that that would be interesting and i i made my own small collection of seeds and uh, leaves and twigs and flowers and and so that process taught me to be uh, observant uh, of things around me and and to sort of um use use that material in in my work in my artwork um yeah so that That's, that was kind of a yeah. life changing experience for me very interesting so rajiv one more thing i wanted to check you have spoken in the past about you know uh, when you were as a kid you was into sketching and everything right so, so tell me about that process and how important uh, that is for a uh, you know someone who aspires to become uh, like for instance the writers are every author will tell you that you know you should maintain a journal so is it hmm. as critical for illustrators to you know have a sketchbook around with them and be able to do it uh, on yeah, the yeah i think a sketchbook is a wonderful idea especially for for you know people who want to do this professionally i actually think you know drawing is a fantastic uh, or sketching is a fantastic thing to for anyone to to sort of uh, indulge in so to speak just because um it's a language of its own and it opens up a lot of uh, new ways of uh, communicating in my head it, you don't have to draw anatomically perfect um, drawings but but something about putting images to paper um 
is is a bit magical and and i i wish that for everyone um yeah but uh, to come back to the process of sketching um, what what i um, enjoy about maintaining a sketchbook is that um there's no client and and it's not meant for public viewing so to speak so it allows you to be uh, rather free and you know you're not being very safe with the things you're draw drawing and you're exploring more things and without the pressure of what will people think if they see this uh, you know new avenues and new um, ideas sort of take form and and that can be interesting and and you know going back to sketchbooks that i maintained say 10 years ago um when they give me a, a sort of uh idea of what my life was back then and what i was thinking of and the things that were troubling me but also it's a very fertile um fertile space for ideas to form i think um visual and uh, otherwise like conceptual um so yeah so i would encourage everyone to to keep one sketchbook that that may, they don't have to show uh, to anyone just keep it for themselves and um put down stuff in it like the funny person you saw in the train who who smelled a little funny or <laughs> you know um uh, the 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 tree that you saw saw that, that whose canopy had, had a strange sort of shape or a cloud that looked like something else those, those are nice things to um to yeah wonderful yeah. yes and you you also have been you know in addition to the books that you illustrate you you, you have also done comic strips and everything but now comic strips is a completely uh different ball game and you have done a comic uh you know the uh, comic novel as well right graphic novel uh, yes we have the two copies that have come out so how has that experience been you know from you know how would you you know kind of describe hmm. your thing about you know working on a graphic novel kind of thing well you know to be honest i don't think of it as so distinct also from picture books um it is it is unique in its own way and and theorists will will be able to talk in more detail about about the distinctions between comics and graphic novels from picture books but to me um um it's not it's not that different you know it is still a visual representation of uh, a visual narrative and um, for me like practically it affords more uh, more space to to tell a story so with more panels and and you know you're able to break down actions more and um, where in a picture book you're trying to uh, you're trying to solidify a lot of text in one frame one still frame uh, in a comic book there is room to to flesh that out a little bit more and um, and having a background in animation film that that can be uh, that can feel uh, more liberating and less than uh, a picture book um that said they they both they both have their um uh the they're both exciting in their own way um thing about comic books is that there's a lot of drawing that <laughs> goes into it so it, it takes more time as well but um yeah i I've, i've really enjoyed um working on on comics and i find that it's uh it's the most natural uh, medium for me you know just instinctively if um if i want to tell a small story uh, i immediately um turn to panels like a series of panels um uh, for example um i drew a book for pratham a wordless book for pratham called duga um and and the brief was not to make it a comic or anything but but it's just that you know in the telling of the 
daily life and travels of a street dog it just felt like the most natural thing to be able to show a steady progression in panels in a comic sort of format not always but um, on on most pages yeah so so in that sense yeah i find uh, so no that i i would say dukka dukka was special also for the fact because again it was a wordless thing it was you know right. typically in comics you have those captions are there and right. those those things are there with there's a reference to it. but that was a very fascinating book and i would invite everyone who can you know the story i think so it's available on the story weaver platform yes it's on the story weaver platform for free and yeah. uh, maybe it's, in print So. Yes, and it's a fascinating book that one must must uh, have, a, and that's one of the reasons I'm a big fan of your work as well. I should I should uh, you know kind of confess well, that thing. So you know, coming from one Patham book to another one that that is there for our theme today is Hello Sun. So if yeah. you were to start with Hello Sun, uh, while we with the sun will slowly set on uh, us uh, any time yes. soon, but saying hello to the sun, tell us about about the book. How did it come about you? How because For a change, you are a you are listed as an author as well for this book. <laughs> yes, an author in quotes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, um. So um. So it was very interesting. And and before we talk about the book itself, uh, uh, Azim Premji University was was um, one of the. Uh, th- this book was made possible through an Azim Premji University grant. So, that, what a lovely little coincidence to uh, to be talking to you about it today. Um, yeah. So, so um, the idea for this book I had put down on paper in around 2018 uh, after a after a workshop that was facilitated by by the author and illustrator Vinayak Verma. Who, whose work I'm a big fan of, um, and, and this was put together by Pratham Book Story Weaver to um, to sort of nudge illustrators uh, into creating their own pieces of work, like the, to to sort of put together their own books, um, and so we had to pitch three ideas, and the first one of which became a book called Anand, also published by Pratham Books. Uh, about a, a sanitation worker in bangalore um but another idea that was there was the premise was and i had made a very small drawing for it um was was about this boy who is who is cooped up indoors because uh, it's raining outside and then after it stops raining and the sun comes out he goes he goes out and you know with great joy and exuberance he, he goes and says hi to all the small things he sees like snails and so it was just one drawing of a boy sort of crouched down uh, on muddy ground uh, saying hello to a small snail that's on a leaf and um, because it became that project became turned into another book i conveniently forgot about it until uh, the editor bijal vachrajani from pratham books uh, sort of showed it to me <laughs> a couple of years back saying this is this would make such a wonderful book why don't you uh, you know uh, revisit this idea and and maybe all be so lucky to have you know editors <laughs> like that who will who will save one throw away piece of drawing of paper and and bring it up later um yeah so anyway um hello sun is uh, the premise is this this small boy um wandering around in the afternoon uh in the in the area around his house which is um not necessarily in a forest or anything it's a semi urban area um there are trees around and there are bushes and things like that and he goes around greeting all the small creatures that that live there or plants creatures and plants um and he takes just takes great joy in in being in the company of these creatures uh, that's the basic premise so he he uh, he says hello to the millipede that's crawling on the ground and um, to a moth that sort of camouflaged against a tree trunk and um, 
a Barbet, a copper smith Barbet that's calling the trees, he imitates that call. Yeah, uh, that's that's the basic premise. Shashwat, are you on mute or is my audio? Yes. So how much? Yeah, sorry. How much time did it take you to uh, kind of uh, put this thing together after Bijal kind of you know brought it to life again? Um, and thank you, Bijal, if you're listening to us right now. Thank you, Bijal, for everything. Uh, how long? I think uh, I think this entire thing from uh, start to finish would have taken about a year. The book is out on the Story Weaver platform right now, but it will be in print in another month or so. I think we probably started this discussion around this time last year, or maybe a little later. And then, of course, um, I sat on it till it was so late that um, the editors um, started getting worried. Let me take this opportunity to to thank everyone who was part of the book as well. Uh, the commis commissioning editor was Bijal Vachrajani, and the editors were Bijal and Smith Zaveri. And it was art directed by Kanato Jimo and assisted by uh, Pooja Prasanna. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, if I've forgotten anyone, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and published, of course, by Pratham Book Story. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, I would say it took about it's a year. It's you know? like an Academy Award acceptance. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But, um, but, you know, there are a lot of people who are involved in the production of these books. And sometimes, you know, uh, fools like me take all the credit. And <laughs> it's not fair. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I would say about a year. So it begins with just, you know, somebody showing you that sketch and, and then um, um, you put down some rough sketches um, and try out some treatment explorations. And then, and then there are discussions with the editorial team. So they'll say, maybe this is a bit long. Maybe we don't need this page. Um, this is nice. Can we have more of this? Um, and uh, yeah, and then you make a rough, sort of manuscript with drawings and then one color sample and then you disappear again and make everybody worry <laughs> about what's happening and then um, and then uh, yeah color yeah. color images and then and then uh, the art director makes it ready for print and sort of you know uh, make sure the the fonts are okay and in this case it was hand hand drawn writing but then, you know, because Pratham Books translates these books into so many other languages, you have to take care of things like making sure there's enough place around the text so that um, when you translate, in case the, the text is longer, uh, it, should not, uh, it should not feel too cramped and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let's, let's, you know, one of the interesting... Uh... One of the interesting aspects of the book is, of course, the cover. And uh, let's take our viewers through the whole journey you had while you sure. know uh, coming up with the cover. So I'll just take your the sketches that you've shared with me. I'll just put them on just for for the sake of everyone. Yeah, just to say yes. yes. Um, yeah. So these these I believe were <clears throat> sketches leading up to the cover. Um, so and and the title itself we discussed quite a bit um, in my uh, in those many years ago uh, premise a uh, small I had thought of this as Hello Sun but then when we uh, brought this idea back to life um, we were thinking should it be Hello Snail or some other small creature and then the editors also suggested um, Hello World because you know, to sort of um, fit in the entire, um, uh, a larger um, uh, sphere of, of, of um, idea, ideas. Um, yeah, but but eventually, after a lot of discussion, we came back to Halosan. So, um, so this these sketches uh, are exploring various um, uh, compositions for the cover. Um, in the first one, um, um, Sorry, I was yeah. imagining uh, yeah. this boy is sort of basking in this uh, in this nice sunlight that's streaming in through clouds or through the trees uh, after it's been raining, and um, 
um and there are some small creatures around him in in the one here there are these uh, bulbuls you know sort of uh, bathing in a small puddle that's formed around around his feet and and sun rays are streaming on him um yes. this one sometimes you know these <laughs> drawings are so rough uh, uh, nobody else can understand them and if you look at them after a while you also can understand what what is happening but i believe uh, the one at the bottom is um um is sort of uh, imagining this boy looking um imagining we are looking at this boy through from the point of view of some small creature that he is uh, sort of interested in so it's a low angle and he is looking sort of towering over some creature we don't know who or um yeah can you see the next one yeah this is this. yeah the, uh, these are the iterations yeah yeah just just uh, again these are really rough quick um ideas and this is for example what what having a sketchbook can be like you know it just it affords you the opportunity to try out many things very quickly without investing too much time and energy in it so that you know uh, once you put in a lot of time and effort into one thing then you're married to that idea and then it keeps you from um, exploring other things um what's happening here yeah here at the bottom one there's a puddle and perhaps he's just walked through it or jumped through it and his clothes are sort of filthy um yeah is, these are throw away sort of ideas Um, yeah, I'll I'll just quickly scan through those. Yeah, yeah. this one is a reflection of the, he's looking at the sun in a puddle in the top left. Um, uh, in in the one on the right, he's he's saying he's sort of hiding behind some bushes and looking at a bird. but he's saying hello sun perhaps it's a sunbird i'm not sure exactly what i was thinking but i made a note that says it looks like he's pooping <laughs> okay uh, which is why we didn't we didn't go ahead with that idea perhaps um yeah these are slightly more you know evolved yeah. now uh, now we are we are getting to the final ones i think so right yeah so uh, the first one on top is again this this point of view of some small creature with him looking at the creature looking at him um uh, with the text on the side and some a bird uh, spied in the form uh, one at the bottom i think is is uh, very close to the eventual uh, the final option we went with um and we all uh, the editorial team and myself sort of like this because um it, it sort of reflects that that exuberance of this this boy and the the immense joy he seems to take in these very small uh, small things um, which is i think such a powerful idea you know and and it uh, i i i was first witness to this idea in the book pishi and me by timira gupta and um and yeah i i i continue to think it's such a wonderful thing yeah, yeah. so yeah so Which this was uh, the top left was another uh, like a, a slight angle uh, which showed where he is jumping out of which is the front door of his house and alarming a, a frog in the process um yeah this the one at the bottom is again that that point of view one like a low angle shot yeah and here's the we see this one the first one that was there earlier yeah it's a more evolved version of that and uh, one after making some rough drawings one um one point that the editorial team had was to was to try and show hints of the city uh in the background which i think was a very nice idea just to push home the the idea that you know you can connect with nature wherever you are you don't have to go to a national park or a forest to to experience it uh, it's available um, in your backyard as well so mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. here's the yes. this was for the the title page and um 
this is sort of the the back story before he goes out and explores um, the outdoors. So he's come back from school. And I think in the final version, there's a school bag and an umbrella lying somewhere on the side. So it sort of sets the context for for what what happens later in the in the book. So he's sort of uh, um, lamenting uh, <laughs> that that he can't be outside because it's raining. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that process of you know, a yeah. sunny day. Yeah. Yeah. Like. How big is this boy? How old is he? How big is he in relation to the chair? Um, is it uh, is it safe for him to to be leaning on the chair at this angle? These are all you know. These are not even thoughts that I had, but when in the process of drawing, you are actually exploring all these things by by making various rough drawings. Is he is he sitting on the chair? Is he standing on the chair? Is he kneeling on the chair? Um, is it in danger of tipping over and him getting hurt? Um, yeah. yeah, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. and that is mm-hmm. again finally, yeah, finally we are we are some coming exploration. Yeah, so this this was a was a colored option for the the cover, and um, yeah, we all agreed that. Um, as fun as it is and as silly as this pose is it didn't quite reflect the the um, that feeling of joy that the other one had where he's leaping through the air and um yeah a frog is also leaping through the air uh, yeah. His, uh, yeah. yeah this is i think so this is the one before the final yeah the and time. Yeah, and then there was some great. Uh, the the art director Kanato had some great um, feedback here as well, which is um, you know to slightly recompose so that we see a little of the sun, and um, uh, to to bring this whole image down a little bit so that we see the sun, which is an important um, element in this book. Um, yeah, and also to compose the title a little bit uh, better. Which we'll see in the next uh, slide. Yeah. yeah, and then of course the Pratham logo on the top and the band, which which shows what what level the book is. Interesting. So yeah, so this is this is the evolution of the book. Uh, you know, the covers I should yes. say more from from the numerous. So yeah, it, it gives you a perspective about the kind of you know iterations one goes through. You know, typically yes. you kind of feel that thing. You know, it's it's it must have come. Inspiration and perspiration are both, you know, uh-huh. kind of entwined yeah. with each other. So I yeah. this also brings me an important aspect that you have been kind of underscoring throughout this thing. All this work is a collaboration of different individuals, right? Yeah. And can't stress still, that enough. Yeah. Sorry. And working with all these, you know, how 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 do you kind of you know do you find the evolution of your work? You know how. Is it dexterous and how, you know, sometimes people say that, okay, first you finish your work and then kind of take the inputs out. Is it, is it an ongoing process for you? Um, because I'm so, uh, yeah, I really enjoy the process of, of talking these things out right from the beginning and, and, and sort of uh, listening to everyone's inputs, but but that's perhaps because I'm slightly underconfident when it comes to to making books, and I'm still, I believe, I'm still finding my my way uh, in this in this world. So it's extremely helpful for me to be able to bounce ideas of of people, um, art directors and editors, <clears throat> and and sort of take in as many perspectives as possible. And um, and yeah, I've I've been quite lucky to to have. I had the opportunity to work with some of the nicest and most talented uh, yeah. editors and art directors. Yeah. And also, I, I I want to know, you know, when we are seeing these are hand-drawn sketches and also what is your medium that you kind of, because these days a lot of digital tools are as mm-hmm. well available and everything. So how do you go through this process of, you know, sketching it first with hand of, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think there are uh, lots of possibilities, but for me, what what 
feels most natural and comfortable is to draw on paper with a with a pencil and it begins with with a sketchbook um uh, like small uh, doodles in a sketchbook and then and then bigger drawings on paper um and then um yeah i i start most projects thinking this one i will draw completely on paper like with some new medium uh, like pastels or color pencils or something but eventually um because i'll be late uh, and deadline will be looming uh, i will lean on a digital medium to sort of um for the finishing touches but uh, that said hello sun is is largely uh, on paper so it's it's drawn with color pencils on paper and then colored with uh, dry pastels um and then scanned into a computer and and some uh, digital finishing touches are added there and and also you composite text and um, image uh, digitally um yeah so th that was the process for hello sun in general the it's a combination of both it's a combination of uh, physical uh, hand drawn media and um, uh, digital tools yeah. and i i wouldn't say there's a right way or a wrong way i think i think it's uh, it's all great um, yeah uh, you know sometimes people tend to pit one against the other that's that's not yeah. that's not necessary it can be a complementary yeah. kind of a thing yeah i think so that's there okay also i wanted to understand what is the lot of these works that you do are also very you know, while they won't be purely scientific but they are non fiction at times as well right so mm. the birds the creatures are very much real in our world they are not mm. imaginary the babbits are there so how do you research and study and do you do some kind of you know, uh, that background thing before you get into any project like yeah uh, could you brought that up because because one of the other people who was involved in this project was uh, radha randarajan who was sort of the uh, you know the person that uh, uh we um who came in as a consultant on this book just to make sure that um the millipedes had the correct number of legs and all that i'm exaggerating of course but uh, but just to make sure that um we didn't drop penguins in in this tropical land <laughs> um yeah um research um that's that's a bit of a serious word and i wouldn't uh, I, i wouldn't say i did too much research other than go uh walking through the parks you know near where i live um and um just observing the things i saw there sort of putting yourself into the characters shoes and um and trying to see through their eyes um in terms of uh, yeah the 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 animals and birds and insects that he comes across uh, i can't say that i i actually did a lot of research this is all from from experience and and from what little i know and and also because this is a level 1 book there was a conscious effort not to be too too specific and go into like latin names of, of these uh, animals or anything like that uh, it it i think the babbit is perhaps the only um specific species uh, or family or genus or whatever that that is mentioned everything else is fairly generic so it's a snail uh, and not a particular kind of snail uh, and it's a it's a millipede and not a particular kind um and um, what else uh, yeah yeah no i'm i'm just saying also so if i were to ask you which would you say is your you know of all the works that you've done had involved a lot of you know uh, uh, what do you say the pre production the kind of study or background thing mm -hmm. for you to get into that thing uh, you're saying which work would have involved which, that which is yes which work uh, there was there was a book called dive again published by pratham yes, books which yes. which uh, which sort of um the publisher sort of commissioned me to uh, to draw um and it began as a wordless book but then had uh, some few words in it so there um because uh, there are no uh, coral reefs near where <laughs> near where i live um that required some um 
of of uh, research but but um yeah it it was reading some books and and watching some videos like um, conservation videos it uh, it didn't uh, yeah i didn't do a phd or anything on it it's it's about taking um you know uh, information and and making it accessible to young readers so um in that sense it it requires some amount of understanding and again there there was a um the the publisher had introduced us to someone who who works in that field just to so we shared uh, the rough sketches to them and sort of uh, asked them to make sure that um um we were not going completely wrong on on what what was being depicted and i remember for that book um this person that we had consulted who is a marine biologist said that is this kind of you know the kind of creatures that these people see on one dive expedition uh, is like a dream come true you know to see so many different creatures on one dive it doesn't really happen but for the purposes of uh, the book which is which was meant to be an introduction uh, to underwater life um, it, it, it was fine but yeah one 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 thing i must say it was a mighty uh, vivid and colorful book i you know the, it, the sheer imagery kind of uh, you know and so we had done this talk also with uh, with an author chanchal singha roy who had done a book on dugongs and oh yeah yeah so there's wow. this in the end i think in the dive there's a dugong there so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, what it was amazing like, creatures they are dugongs yes yeah so i you know typically we we say that writers suffer from these what uh, the writers block do illustrators mm-hmm. also suffer from these blocks sometimes and how do you overcome them ah uh, yeah i think i think illustrators also suffer from illustrators block um <laughs> uh i would say uh, again like uh, it sounds like a broken record but but keeping a sketchbook at hand is a is a great way because it it builds a muscle you know uh, of of being able to take your thoughts and and your experiences from real life and put that uh, sort of mold it into imagery and put it down on paper um that's a good it's a good muscle to to build um i would uh, a, a version of illustrator's block is when you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again and perhaps you feel like you're not evolving enough your your art or, or your style let's say is not evolving enough and then then you sort of intervene and make a conscious decision to to try something something different perhaps um yeah that that's uh, that's i i I'm also saying. had one more question to you rajiv yes. most of the writers and authors have said this thing that writing is also uh, while it's creative it's also about discipline so they have emphasized mm. that you know there are a lot of writers who emphasize on the fact that you should you should kind of you know uh, fix a time and work on this irrespective of what happens is that the same do you follow a process like that for yourself yeah i do but but i accept that there are different uh, different ways to to approach this um so also because there are different um it depends on what part of the book you're working on in the beginning where it's about ideas and and you know um just very rough explorations and things there you don't want to be too disciplined because then you fall into familiar patterns and and you fall back on uh, the stuff that you you uh, you already know and and things that you're used to doing so there it helps to take a walk or or be a little wild um, but um, but then after that once you have your um, your rough layouts done then it's a you know you it's like going into a tunnel and um, and uh, it's a long process of of uh, creating the final artworks and and that can get a bit lonely also because it's a longer process and and you're not interacting so much with with your publisher or your editors or your art directors 
um, their discipline definitely helps, especially if you're someone who works from home or who works alone. Um, it's it's good to to follow some sort of. Uh, I have found that it it helps to follow some sort of um, um, time. Uh, what is it called? Um, time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a routine basically. Um, yeah, so so that you're not overworking yourself and and you're not being too lax as well. Um, yeah. So one more thing I, I would want, uh, you know, in addition to all the nature and animals and dogs and you know, different things that you feature, there are also humans in your, uh, you know, you feature humans as well. So how is it, uh, you know, how is it different drawing humans and sketching them and including them in your book? What is your perspective in terms of the broader perspective of, you know, our place in the whole, you know, ecosystem per se? So this uh, humans have always been fascinated by, uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, in in real life. Like I'm I'm kind of shy and an introvert, and I struggle with um, in social situations and all. But but just in terms of characters and and you know personalities and things like that, I, I've always. Um, found humans very, very fascinating to draw and, and how unique each person and character is. So right from art college, I remember being fascinated by, um, by uh, drawing, drawing from life and drawing different characters. And I remember I used to go to uh, JJ School of Art is close to the railway station, uh, Victoria Terminus yes. in Bombay. And yes. um, I remember going and sitting in on the railway platform and and drawing all the different kinds of people that I saw there and and it continues to be a great um, source of ins inspiration you know to go if you find yourself waiting at the airport or in any sort of uh, public space like a, a vet veterinarian's waiting room or anything <laughs> um, you just see I just find the people that pass through these places so endlessly fascinating and and i am seized by the the desire to to draw to draw them and to record them uh, in my in my sketchbook mm -hmm. yeah yeah speaking about the railway stations of mumbai i should say uh, one of my favorite ones has been mario miranda who uh, you know captured the city yeah. like you know awesome. The the multitudes of people and the uniqueness yes. that they including uh, dogs and cats that were there. <laughs> yeah, so and uh, actually like, in this regard, yeah. a, a great inspiration for me is Priya Korean, who is able to you know uh, take uh, she she'll see some fellow passing on a scooter in the fraction of an eye, she'll take a, a mental photograph and then go home and and draw this character in such vivid detail and. and uh, in such a unique and and wonderful way, it's a wonderful inspiration for me. So I was I was just coming. Which which all uh, are the artists and illustrators that you find uh, you know inspiring for you and you kind of you know you kind of uh, follow them or you know get drawn by their work. See, I'm wary of this question because after I answer, I always think, I but I didn't mention this person. They are so inspiring." <laughs> no, no, no. We we, uh, we can we can include an asterisk after that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Of late, you know, I've been um, uh, I've been finding some of these the young uh, the younger generation of illustrators. Their work is so inspiring and so fascinating. Um, I'll name a few, and uh, and please let's leave an asterisk at the end of it because there are lots of people uh, who can't yeah. be mentioned here. Um, yeah. So Shivam Chaudhary is somebody whose work I find so inspiring. Um, uh, the, there's an artist called Barkha Lohia who also uh, draws a lot of nature-themed um, stories. Uh, Sarthak Sinha, um, his work is wonderful. Um, who else? Um, I can't remember. Uh, the, the Pluto and Cycle magazine that Ektara publishes has these has a lot of these artists' work. These um, Rishi Sahani, 
and Bhargav Kulkarni, I think. I yes, hope I'm not getting these names wrong. But yeah, yeah all, all these these guys are so so talented and um, yeah, it's uh, wonderfully inspiring. So I I was confess Bhargav has designed our Pirana course called as Nature Writing for Children. He has designed that uh, you know cover for us. That, that oh, has, so nice. Yeah. What a nice yeah, fantastic. Concept. But but going from the past ones also, when you were growing up, which were which were the yeah. artists that you really liked? Um, so uh, when I was uh, say in the ninth or tenth standard, um, a friend of mine who was in JJ School of Art at the time, um, he had a book about the artist Norman Rockwell, who was a who was an American illustrator and painter. Um, yeah, so he his work was really inspiring for me because he would again he would he would capture these personalities and character in in a lot of vivid detail, and and that was an early inspiration for me. Mm. When I started um, illustrating books, um, Quentin Blake, of course, um, with his um, loose lines and wonderful wonderfully um joyful drawings um was 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 an inspiration um well uh, uh, i really like the work of asan ellis who is who is an author illustrator um based abroad yeah but but going back to childhood um my brother and i subscribed to target magazine when we were kids and um, and the comics of Ajit Nainan and Jayanto were were my favorite from that book. Uh, it was also easier for me to read comics because I was not a great reader. Um, so I, uh, my love for comics, I think, stem stem from there perhaps, um, and they continue to be great inspirations mm -hmm. for me. Wonderful. So, yeah, uh, while we're talking about that, there are a couple of questions, I think, so the, while we conversation is on. There's one by uh, Sakshi, uh, Sakshi Joshi. She asks, how, how did you start working as a freelancer? Did you rely on your portfolio networking? And also, did you play an important role? So, yeah, so we can, we'll just take these questions as they come by. Sure, sure. So, how did I start working as a freelancer? Mm, I worked a couple of jobs after after studying animation film design. Um, and then um, I, I, didn't, I didn't make a very conscious decision to be a freelancer. It just sort of happened. Um, um, it, uh, it gave me the opportunity to dip my fingers into various kinds of work, which, which was very exciting for me. Um, and not not get stuck doing just one thing. Uh, and when I was young, I had a lot of energy and enthusiasm to try out all kinds of different kinds of work. Um, and definitely, portfolio plays a huge role. Uh, and and that that's something that uh, all visual artists should sort of work hard on, um, uh, sort of putting together a great portfolio. Um, I, if I had to offer advice, and I'm very usually very hesitant to do so, I would say that um, before jumping into a freelance sort of um, engagement, it does help to to work a, at least a few full time jobs, just because there are things that you learn without even knowing. You know, just how to talk to people, how to work in a team, how to um, how to how to sort of uh, other things that are not necessarily even related to your craft, just how to make an invoice or <laughs> how to write mails. Um, those are those are things you learn on jobs, and um, they're import. They turn out to be really important in a professional engagement. And I'm saying this like I am a pro at all of this, which I'm not. Um, but <laughs> but I think it's important. Yeah. So I think that's what a full time job sort of teaches you. No, true, very true. Creativity is very important, but so is the GST number. Yes, correct, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so coming uh, coming to you know your work, I, there's another book that has you know kind of come up recently. is a very interesting book that is there, Lady Tarzan. This is based on a real character, and 
uh, again, unlike nature books, this is about a person. So that that also builds up on the theme. So if you were to just just give us a quick uh, you know insight into that book, and I have that uh, uh, kind of uh, I can take p- uh, our viewers through a visual journey through the book itself. Yeah. So this book um, was um, published by Ektara, and um, and it's wonderfully written by the the very very talented and fun Lavanya Karthik, whose work I, I really enjoy and admire. Um, and it tells the life of uh, Jamuna Tudu, who who um, who sort of uh, uh, an activist. Uh, in in conservation and she she sort of fought to protect the forest near her home in um in madhya pradesh um yeah and it's very very uh, sensitively told uh, um by by the author and um yeah it was it was a lovely experience to make to make drawings for it and the author had sent me in fact lots of reference um, images and and videos and films and things like that about about the um the personality uh, the the person um, as well as the place where these things are set although it would have been wonderful to go and visit in real life it's not always possible um yeah so so those those were sort of the basis for some early early drawings and explorations and things like that one of if i'm if i'm not wrong for for your for your chitti you had visited that place right yeah that that was uh, that was one of the few books where you know the opportunity present the author was so kind i was kind enough to um to offer um a visit uh, to the place because they felt it was it was important to to the illustrations um and and the author also shared uh, pictures and photographs of the of the dog uh, in the book <clears throat> so so all those things were were greatly uh, helpful and uh, it would have been perhaps a different book if if that visit didn't happen yeah I, i agree so you know coming to this book let, let let's take our you know our viewers through that uh, wonderfully i you know the process again it's it's the process that sure. seems so interesting hmm. yeah yeah so yeah. these were some um, early uh, sketches just just sort of um, the, the the publisher had not set uh, paginated the the book uh necessarily like they had not said that this text needs to come on this page so so we were free to sort of imagine how many pages and how big the pages would be and the format and things like that so these are as you can see really small thumbnail drawings um uh imagining these things as spreads and what the text would be on each page so it begins with you know an arrow flying through the air very dramatic uh, in the middle of night um uh, and these woodcutters uh, stopped in mid mid swing um because they are astonished by this this arrow that is thudded into a tree trunk close to them and that that sort of sets the the tone for for this story <clears throat> um yeah And, yeah this uh, is the yes yeah here there's some small notes on the this um the writing is is so beautiful you know it's it's sort of you don't realize it but in the end you realize that the voice of the text or the the narration is actually from the point of view of the trees that that jamuna to do is is sort of fighting to preserve um so so i have made some notes about just thinking out aloud whether there is a way to um visually depict um that that this is being narrated by uh, a tree or some sort of green uh, plant entity um which which we didn't exactly take forward but um yeah some rough layouts uh, trying to play with different scales as well so that it's not too um we don't always see the characters at the same magnification so we see large small um 
in this on the top right we see uh, we, we're trying to depict how alone she feels in the beginning in this fight uh, against the 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 woodcutters and the the companies that are uh, the mafia that is sort of cutting down her forests and so she, we see this small person in a sea of uh, trees around her and and how she starts because nobody is willing to help her she starts this march along her uh, on her own armed with just one small stick and then it's a long lonely march and then later uh, in the next page i think um, uh, more people sort of uh, raise their ha hands and and join her in that process and, um, and here, yes yes in, in this process also the uh, the kind of the trees and all also are getting that you know they are also becoming like the sentinels out there and you know kind of yeah and because they they play such an important part in the story uh, they are also sort of treated like like important characters uh, and um, we try and see the forest from from afar as well as individual trees from close those are some conscious um, decisions that that we made yes yeah these are again the explorations so various explorations of the last last page where you know it says um, you know her as uh, lady uh, how did it go you know her as lady tarzan but we call her sister so it's the trees you know saying that uh, they share this special relationship and and uh, these are explorations of trying to um uh, through visuals depict that that special um relationship between uh, this human being and and the forest and yes. so is she sitting in the middle of the forest is she uh, is she hugging a tree yeah um these are some sketches for the cover um and just the the image of this uh, person stretching a bow is so powerful you know um that that we decided to go with that yeah yeah and these are the covers that you're getting yeah. to just like that hello sun yeah. different you... magnifications should we see this close should we see this far if it's close then we have the option of uh, placing the title within aligning it with the hand that stretched out and if it's uh, from afar then it's, <clears throat> it's to the side um yeah and these are the final yeah one of the important yeah, turning points i should say pages. Yeah. yeah these are still rough sketches they're not exactly final but but moving towards this yeah. kind of gives an idea of the whole process that you were kind of you know how yeah. it was coming together i should say very interesting yeah. i i'll just take quickly to the I'll, sure. yes yeah. this is this my was, favorite uh, and this this was this gives a sense of the process so th th these are color pencils on paper for the drawing and then um uh, because again i was late on the project i scanned it at this stage and then colored added more color digitally on the computer um yeah the initial idea was to was to paint with watercolors or color with, uh, color pencils but um i was late as i <laughs> always am <laughs> and i think so, yeah and this is how it finally Yeah, this this changed the the font and things changed but this was yeah yeah fascinating yeah this is so so colorful and fascinating i should say you know the mm. the forest themselves yeah so yeah so now i there's this one question that we ask all the all our authors and all how how difficult or easy it is to make a living out of you know working on these sort of projects and books yeah. the tusker in the room uh, so to speak <laughs> yes <laughs> um yes it's it's definitely hard um i can't speak for writers but i think um writers feel the same way um you definitely need to um have an alternative um stream of revenue i'd say like uh, some way to 
do commercial work and sort of make a living from it um so that that funds projects like these not like uh, you don't get paid at all but um um it is uh, what it is for for various reasons um and, and i'm sure the publishing business is hard and um, and um, yeah and and it it feels a bit sad you know to to tell young people that you cannot only do this you cannot focus only on this because as a crafts person that's what you want to say like you keep doing this and you get better at it and and you know uh, you hone your skills and you perfect your craft but sadly um you also need to at least in my experience you you need to balance this with better paying gigs even if those aren't uh, as fulfilling uh, creatively and um, um in terms of you know how valuable they feel um, uh, to create <clears throat> to yeah that that that's as you said it's a sad reality which which of uh, yeah. the way things are right so yeah so yeah. you know, one of one of the things you have also spoken in the past is you know the the fact of collaborating with authors how hmm. important is this process that you have with authors do, do you is it necessary is it important to kind of interact or you know you would you like to work Uh, the whole thing into you know uh, we could move it into silos where the authors write their book and the illustrators mm. come and then we work together so i have worked in both scenarios mostly in the scenario where the author writes a manuscript submits it to the publisher the publisher gets in touch with an illustrator and then you work with the publisher uh, either an editor or an art director or both and and then they are in touch with the with the author so so the the publisher is your point of contact for both illustrator and writer and they uh, illustrator and writer and they don't necessarily meet um so that is that is largely how how it works um and that's fine um I, i'm happy to work like that I, but i have also worked on projects where you know i know the author and um we sort of there's a lot of um back and forth or we pitch a project together in which case you know we are free to um, exchange ideas quite freely and and uh, talk things through and and sometimes illustrations influence the text as much as the other way around so so that can be interesting but i think at the end of it it comes down to to that relationship you know i think the publisher's perspective uh, generally while keep, to keep um keep these uh, two entities uh, separate is that sometimes one party is slightly more um um uh what's the right word uh, i don't want to say dominating but but has a stronger voice and then that sort of uh, um it it sort of affects um pushes their ideas too much and and the publisher feels like they can play a, a better role in in balancing both these um these entities which is a is quite a valid um valid rationale i think yeah because um, because you get to get third you know new perspective to the exactly yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, which is so important actually yeah um, if so. if you are not influenced by each other thought you can yeah. work completely you know in a new yeah. fashion and that that can be a, but yes uh, you spoke about one of the books today uh, which was timira's book that you kind of yes. worked with and timira has also you know uh, sent a she sent a small short yes. video about Thank the work that she did with <laughs> that she <laughs> did with you so yes so there's i i would just like to you know there's a short uh, sketches that you uh, uh, we are taking a small portion from that uh, book pishi and me so if yeah. you were to just a experience with timira because there you said you didn't meet her before this yeah time. yeah that's true um um so um that book 
was art directed by somesh uh, and and the brief was was very interesting and very nice which was to um to depict uh, this this story completely from a child's like a three or three and um which one throws a nice new challenge to the to the artist um and to to it it also allows you to see things from a different perspective so um yeah i i had never met or or even heard of this author before when um when i worked on this book uh, although the in the manuscript the author had left small notes uh, for the illustrator about you know um what kind of streets are they walking on and um um what this relationship between these people is like and um and what kinds of uh, you know creatures like dogs and cats and things they see um yeah so these these were some um early sketches just exploring uh, what the treatment would be like and uh, uh, there was a discussion with the art director about this frame as well to make it sort of uh, not a very uh, straight rectangular uh, thing but have this um, uneven amoebic sort of um, vignette uh, around the drawing to sort of uh, we were going for that old um, uh, projector slide uh, sort of feel you know where the edges are sort of blurred out against a against a black background uh, to to sort of um, give that uh, nostalgic uh, impression um, yeah so this was this is aji aji yeah. aji at the vegetable market yeah. um, and um, yeah, this is this is explorations of that rough sketches um yeah um and and the funny thing is the author timira had i think she she was imagining uh, a place that was uh, in bombay um in in some small gullies near where she lives and and as um in the process of working on this book i walked around uh, some streets in bangalore uh, near the baneswadi railway station and and took pictures and made mental notes and and things like that but um but when she saw the images to her they were very much um set in bombay even though they want to imagine that way um so yeah that was interesting i think so your your past experience in bombay also came must have come into seeped into this thing yeah right? perhaps but also i think um in the, the world specific, is very similar for uh, from that perspective i guess it's that's true um yeah but i think there are things that are common also across across geographies um even in the specifics of of the kind of baskets that these vegetables are in um there, there is there are lots of uh, commonalities um yeah this was an exploration with a with a charcoal stick i think this to try out a new thing yeah this is again this is, so again this the the text doesn't necessarily say that um that they they um they stop and and are sort of poking at touch me nots um it just says sometimes we like to take it slow and stop um uh, we take our time basically um but i i don't remember if these suggestions came from the art director or the editor or the author or myself which is why which is you know um testament to how collaborative this process can be you know it's a lot of <clears throat> a lot of people um uh, coming up with these things yeah i see all this is them beginning this is beginning this is, yeah. this is an exploration of the cover so we we never actually see pishi we just feel her presence in in an outstretched arm or um, you know uh, the sneakers that she wears with her uh, salwar kameez um, yeah yeah and this is and the color yeah these are some color yeah 
she has so another has... exploration of color with sketch pens i think uh, i'm not wrong so so in the course of this conversation i have realized so many things you are using color pencils sketch pens you know charcoal pens and so many mediums that you are uh, doing not okay. enough i feel <laughs> like there's so much more to there's so much to explore and um, yeah there, there are artists who do this so so well you know these they explore so many different um, media uh, mediums and so one one thing i just quickly as as one of the thing i i know we are running short of time but there's one interesting comment that has come from uh, author mala kumar who was also one of our you know thing yeah mala in the mala is yeah, here mala. so she 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 said this while you were talking about you know <laughs> book where authors took yeah. us and made a story i <laughs> said so this was uh, pratham book six frame story challenge uh, when they were just launching the the story we were platform they had invited uh, artists to to sort of just tell a wordless story with six six images and then um, so i had also participated in that and and, uh, and mala and um, uh, manisha uh, took took those images and and they put a wonderful little story to it um, and and it got published as a small book called see in the rain <laughs> so <laughs> that's what she's talking about for context wonderful wonderful yeah and mala's book up in the mountains that was the one that we had you know she was yeah. she was one of the speakers in one of these talks earlier so, yeah so uh, before we we uh, we let go of you there, there's a section that we we are you know kind of you know you have to give quick responses to some of the questions that are you know based around your work so you know Yeah, you can do a you get a sip of water as well. Thankful us. that it's based around my work and not around <laughs> my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's see. So <laughs> there are a couple of questions that are there. You, so and we have collated it from all the people that you know when we announced that okay you will be coming. So we have just put them together. So if question number one, have you ever drawn yourself or your friends in the books? Uh, I don't think I've drawn myself, but. Um, i try and put my family members in, into these books um for one book uh, for katha called the little big man um which is a poem by rabindranath tagore um about this boy who is waiting for his father to come home and and pretending to be a a big big man basically a grown up person um i used old photographs of my parents um and and my brother when he was a very small boy in in an old house in kerala as reference so um yeah and also a book called amachi's amazing machines and amachi's yes. incredible investigations feature um uh, both my grandparents uh, th- this character is loosely based on both my my grandparents as well as a grand aunt who was fond of yeah and and your uh, uh, i think so dugga is already there the, the, the dog that that's right had. dugga is also based on my life um, yeah yes. lots of uh, lots of books come to think of it but not yes. me i don't think i am i feature yeah. although people so accuse is, uh, characters of yeah. being me uh, but that's not true it's just that um, yeah you your drawing sort of take on your personality sometimes and uh, that's unintentional fascinating okay which is harder to draw a dragon or a unicorn <laughs> uh perhaps a uh, unicorn horses are quite difficult to draw they they have a lot of very subtle subtle features and and one small uh, line here and it looks like a cow and uh, the ear in the at the wrong angle and it looks like a deer so and and dragons are a little easier i suppose because they're yeah, so yeah. weird and yeah you just have to and you just draw some fire from the mouth and you can claim it's a dragon <laughs> <laughs> okay if you had one super power related to drawing what would that be um uh to be able to <laughs> work with watercolors perhaps <laughs> i think that such a super power and i'm so fascinated and impressed by people who can who can work in that medium because uh, it's really like it's working with a third person uh, another person in the room you know because you will want the 
trains to go this way and they'll go this way or <laughs> you want it to stay here and it'll go like that so yeah so that you work with uh, watercolor that's super okay super that, that's one super power that that has to you'll have it so if you do you listen to music when you draw uh, sometimes i do again it depends on uh, your act uh, if you're uh, creating uh, sort of ideation sketches uh, or very early sketches where you're also reading um, text and and sort of listening for the voice of these characters or or thinking about what you want this character to look like or what you want what mood you want this uh, image to to carry um at that time it can be uh, a bit distracting um uh, anything in your ear but but once your once i am um at the process where uh, i'm coloring or creating some uh, going over rough sketches uh, to clean them up or something then then i listen to music because it gets quite lonely uh, <laughs> to be an illustrator uh, sitting at your desk which i like but uh. <laughs> that there's so many contradictions <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah if if you could switch places with one of your characters which one would that be um uh perhaps uh, uh, Maithili from Maithili and the Minotaur. Okay. Yeah, that would be uh, a world of monsters, basically. Yes, and go through all that uh, adventures yourself, right? Yes, yeah. Yes, that's a wonderful graphic novel. And finally, if you could only use three colors in a book, which colors would that be? Um, black, brown, and um, gray. Okay. Black, brown, and gray. <laughs> that, that's interesting. So you know, with that, I I think so. Uh, we have overshot our time, and uh, I I remember when we had started this discussion, you had told me that oh, there's so how how much can we talk? So I'm I'm yeah. that that's interesting that you know conversations with an illustrator can be you know can be really <laughs> long and interesting. Yeah. So I, I finally, I had one 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 request of you. if if there's some message or that you want to give to people who want to pursue this thing what would that be you know um again i'm very hesitant to uh, give out advice but um i would say um as difficult as it is to make a living uh, out of this it's in, i think it's important not to once you're doing the work to put those things aside so that resentment about um about poor uh, remuneration and things like that don't seep into your work and and you don't end up doing a mental calculation of itna paisa mein itna hi milega <laughs> because um that's that i think is more harmful than helpful perhaps and um what i'm trying to say very inarticulate inarticulately is to is to sort of do do your best on on any work that you do so that <clears throat> uh, one the practical reason is that you you build a strong portfolio and and you're appreciated for your work and your efforts and two because it's it's just not a good way of working um to to do this calculation in your head uh, it's not how art is made and uh, it it upsets me to see um see that sometimes and i think it does does more harm than good okay yeah. and what has been your you know how do you feel when you see kids reacting to your books uh, you have done these workshops and i'm sure at at some random book show that you know some kid is going to how, how does it feel basically <laughs> so at workshops uh, i am not taking anything in because i am so terrified <laughs> to be uh, in the middle of uh, so many people um, my bp will be really high and uh, i'll just my instinct is to get out of there but uh, but yeah it, it's really um, 
first of all this idea that you know something that you're drawing on paper in your house is then going out to some other office where they're printing it and then it's going uh, these books are going to the hands of uh, real people out in the world is, is still an idea that uh, you're wrapping your head around i'm wrapping my head around um yeah it's it's really nice to to hear uh, reactions from readers especially kids because they can be quite honest um some sometimes you know uh, parents will, <laughs> will come with their kids and say hey, tell tell uncle how much you like that book and they'll be like ah, it was okay <laughs> and and i really i really appreciate that kind of honesty it, it's so uh, it's so lovely and um, and so refreshing yeah. and and of course uh, people say that they appreciate it specific things also which which is nice yeah you you love to see the world from a you know perspective yeah. of a kid in most of your books i i guess yes. so getting their perspective is is kind of yeah it's it's also illuminating you know for if you are drawing drawing children and and depicting their lives and their worlds it's, and which which is also one of the things i i should also confess you know the fact that uh, these nature books are very important and you know in that sense your illustrations and uh, imagine books without these color the visual play i i think so they they won't you know engage any kid so i i think in that sense your work is very important because you have the enormous task of holding them you know to the to the text that that is being printed on that thing mm. yeah. oh, thanks for saying that um, <laughs> i'm i primarily do this because i i love to draw <laughs> but um, but yeah it's nice to know that it has value as well function in the world so so with that rajiv thank you so much for your time it, it's been such a uh, learning experience I, I i you know working with you through this uh, program itself i i the process going through you, with you the process was very interesting for me as well mm-hmm. because you know we we often talk about the writing process the the sketching and the drawing process is equally you know dexterous i would say so with that mm-hmm. you know it, it has been a great uh, uh, thing that we we had today a conversation and i'm sure mm-hmm. a lot of people out here who whosoever have seen this or will be seeing this will kind of you know draw their own uh, things from draw, draw their own uh, <laughs> conclusions mm-hmm. and yeah, possibly nice start uh, yeah possibly start maintaining a sketchbook for that yeah that would be nice yeah um, for so everyone that, to maintain a sketchbook that that could be and you could you could just doodle around and no one to yeah. show that that's that's the best thing that i like yeah. so that with that thank you everyone uh, so we have uh, so i have just quick uh, announcement day after tomorrow we have uh, the other series that we are running nature nature in our cities we have um, professor gopi sundar with us who will be talking about saras cranes and large water birds in india so that's that's again on uh, friday at 4 pm he'll be talking to monica kosh uh, faculty so that is one thing you should not miss and next month we have zai vetekar with us for oh. the nature writing for children series <laughs> hello so, yeah So yeah, we have we have good company, right? So yeah. wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Rajiv, and hope thank you, Shashwat. Thanks for having me. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye.